I thank you for taking the time to come and hear my story. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I am Mary Lawler. I am the wife of Coach Kenny Lawler, who is the defensive coordinator here at Valley for football for the past uh, umpteen years and just made a change in his career to the track and field coach. Um, we have six kids uh, blended and uh, we both are educators. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And hope that you can see my PowerPoints. Can I get a thumbs up if you can see it or an emoji? Oops. Thank you. All right. So Mary Lawler, <laughs> who am I? <laughs> well, that's me on the very left. I am from a poor, uh, low income family where education was not um, thought about as in terms of a future it was pushed upon me to go out and get a job by the time I was 16. These are my sisters, my dad, my uncle, my auntie, kids. So as I mentioned, work was a survival for me. It was always chasing my own tail, always trying to make ends meet. And every time by the end of each uh, pay period or by the end of the month, I was broke and always wondering, you know, where am I going to get the next meal? And then when I had kids, it became a real reality that I needed to do more with my life. And I've always been drawn to education because I also saw that education had a status of respect. So I really wanted to go to school, but you know, my dad would not allow me to. So I continued to work and chase my own tail and was always living from paycheck to paycheck. So as a single mom, I was a single mom of two kids. That's my son and daughter. And I pushed education on them. And my son was never really into it, but he. Uh, went to Mount Sac for a little bit, and then he just got a job at Target and loves what he does. And so I say, we say nothing about it. And our daughter got her bachelor's uh, during COVID, the time away. So I got married and got a bigger family. My husband, Kenny Lawler, has four kids that he brought into our marriage. And I was extremely happy about that. We both are, um, you know, student advocates. And also we support all of the programs uh, here on campus, Latino faculty. Um, I think this one here in the middle, I can't remember um, if, uh, I know he's on here, if you can remember what that was for. Well, I think it was a Cesar Chavez actually celebration, I wanna say and then spotlighting our success. This is my family today. As you can see, we are a blended family. There's a lot of us. <laughs> and our gr first grandson. And so my husband allowed me to go back to school and he took care of our bills. And so I was able to go back to school and throughout that time period of probably like 30 years, I continued to go to a junior college and got a class here. I took a class there, um, but never really did I have a degree in anything. And then I went to Pasadena City College and one of the instructors there um, asked me if I was gonna graduate. And I said, no, I, don't, I didn't get it, my graduation in time. 
I don't think I have enough credits. And she, you know, said, let me go look. And she did the math for me. And she said, you've got it. Let's get you up there. You're going to graduate. And I was like, what? I'm going to graduate. Like, I'm really going to get a degree. And she's like, not just one, you're going to get two, you're going to get the Associates of Arts and the Associates of Science. And I was like, wow, that just makes me feel like I have some sort of brain. I'm like excited about it. <laughs> so then I got to thinking my biggest fear is I might trip and fall going up there to get my diploma. Uh, but I did it. I made it through that. And then I went over to Cal Poly Pomona in 2018. I got my bachelor's and one year later, I got my master's. So it has been a hard path. And I'll tell you, it takes a family of supporters. It's hard to do it on your own. I can't tell you how many times that I didn't have anybody to help mentor me and how many times I just wanted to quit because I didn't know if I was even on the right path. I'll be honest, when I graduated in Pasadena, I already had 72 uh, units and no one ever said anything about you only needed 60 to graduate. So that kind of broke my heart that, you know, why are counselors in the left field? Why don't they reach out to you and say, hey, I noticed, you know, you got to get this done, this done, because you're ready to graduate. I think if we had, you know, more uh, connection, more communication from our counselors and help us with our path, I think a lot of us would get out and do better and be uh, quicker in reaching our goals. And I'd like to introduce to you this evening, one of the students I've mentored, when I met LaToya, she was already working two jobs. And I could tell she was happy with her jobs, but just wanted more out of life. And then she also shared with me the, the, the certificate that she got, somebody told her about it and she had to pay for that, like a lot of money. I said, no, we pay you, girl. We're going to pay you to go to school. I want you to come and, and uh, register at San Bernardino Valley College. And she was like, oh, I don't know if I really can do that. I said, look, I'm way older than you. And I went back to school when I was in my 50s to have to compete with those in their 20s. That has been a, a path for me. So you can do it. So I'm going to give the floor to LaToya for a second and just let her talk about her journey here at San Bernardino Valley College. And just to let you know, she graduates this end of the spring. LaToya. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah, my name is LaToya Pleasant, and um, I met, met Miss Lawler um, in her one of her kinesiology classes. Um, I had brung my patient there who I was working with and, um, oh, she mentioned that I got my certificate and I got my certificate. Um, it's an LVN certificate and I went to Summit Career College and that certificate cost me, now I think I owe them about $50,000. <laughs> and um, I definitely don't feel like it was worth um, the money, but anyhow, because I still had to work two jobs. <laughs> and so... Um, now, when she talked me into going back to school, because it was always in the back of my mind, but I just never felt like I could do it because I was a single mom. And um, so she was like, yeah, you could do it. You could do it. And very supportive. And I'll help you along the way. And, and I was like, okay, no problem. I'll do it. And so we signed up, got me signed up and helped me with my financial aid and helped me with everything along the way. Got me in my classes. And um Boom, here I am. I finished a year and a semester later. So it didn't even take me two years. And um, throughout my journey there, she has been um, my number one supporter and um, helped me th with everything. Um, there's been times I didn't have support from counselors. They couldn't guide me anywhere. Um, people don't email back. Don't give me no type of guidance, but she has been there. And so um, I'm forever grateful. And so like I said, it got finished in a, a year in the semester, and uh, my GPA is, right now, it's a 4.0, and I finished December 17th of 2021, 
And so I walked this May. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. Thank Not you. only did she do it in a year and a semester, but she's also on the deans, on the honors. Yes, so I'm a did. part of, um, what is it? The American Honor Society. Yes. And mind you, she came in with zero classes, none, but she did, you know, put in the hard work and she still kept her two jobs. Yes. So absolutely. she really worked hard and, you know, she got no sympathy from me. She would cry <laughs> sometimes like I need, you know, I'm so overwhelmed. I've got homework. And I said, Hey, just one, one class at a time, just pull it out and just, you know, do the homework you need to do. You can do it. And, uh, and I think that having that mindset, like I just want to get done, I think is more important than um, I need to work because that goes back to my PowerPoint about chasing my tail, right? We keep thinking I need to go work so I can pay my bills, but then I'll just take a couple of classes. So it's taking you longer. But if you really put your financial aid to where you need to put your monies and live at the bare minimum of what you can get by, then you can take your classes and get yourself in and out of here in a year and a half and transfer on. So Latoya's transferring to where? Um, I was accepted to um, UCR, Cal State uh, San Bernardino, Cal State Fullerton and Cal Poly Pomona, but I'm choosing to go to Cal State San Bernardino because it's, it's um, financially uh, the best place to go for me and you know closest, so. But yeah, I feel like um, anybody could do it quickly. I mean, I think it's, you know, if you're afraid, just, I feel like you should just do it because the longer you take, like I started off with one class. The first semester, I started off with one class. By the end, I had seven classes. Yes, because she saw that she could do it. Because one of the things that we're afraid of when we go back is the challenge. Yes. And, and embarrassment. Ugh. Will I be able to do the work? And so I too felt the same challenges that she felt, but I was not going to give up. And so when I got my master's, you know, my sister said to me, this is the one thing no one can take from you is your degree, is the education, because you put in the hard work for it. And so my husband, he said, well, you can get a part-time job, but you're going to have to make, you know, full-time pay because you have a couple of your student loans. So I said, okay, I can do it. And so I had three jobs. My first job was at, you know, um, an adjunct instructor at Valley. I teach adapted PE and lecture classes in kinesiology and health. And I'm also an assistant football coach. I do player development, have help the student athletes with their classes. And sometimes, you know, if they have an issue, personal, or something like that, you know, I'm also called Mama Lawler. And uh, my husband has been a very big supporter in my life and helps to pave the way for women. Um, I know that some people think that, you know, coaches are, you know, self-centered and they are, but my husband is very uh, open to giving people the platform to do the best that they can do. So I think having someone in your life that's in your corner cheering you on, I think is real important. He has been my cheerleader from day one. And I was also the first um, woman to have an assistant football uh, coaching position here in Southern California. So that was excited here at, on our campus as well. And the other part that my husband opened the door to me was our union. I was never really educated as to what our union is about. And I'll tell you that in this past three years of learning about our union, um, I see how when you bond together, how you can make a difference, how you can make a change. And I think that it's important that, you know, even as students that you pull in your resources together to help push someone to get where they have to go. And so um, the union pushes the students and um, support them. And then it also supports the faculty to make sure that we're not taking advantage of 
or that we're working long hours. And for adjunct, that's really important because sometimes, um, sometimes the management or dean will ask you to do more and then not pay you for it. You should never have to do work and be um, not paid for it. So always keep that in mind. And before I go on, I do want to say um, real quick, um, Latoya, her daughter is also uh, enrolled in San Bernardino Valley College and a softball player. Is this her first semester, Latoya? Um, no, actually, this is her second semester. This is her second semester. So she's got big shoes to fill, right? Mom went yeah. before her, right? Yeah, she's doing well. Um, she's already out of, I think, a 3.6, 3.7 GPA. She's always been a great student um, all her life. So the grades are going to be there. And so she gets to see mom graduate. And now she's also going to get to be part of that. They're going to be alumni sisters. Yeah. I'm, alum I'm alumni sisters with my daughter um, from Cal Poly Pomona. Uh, because oh. we both graduated from there. That's cool. It is cool. And so let me go on. I don't want to keep everybody too late. but And so let me talk about this for a second. Hard work pays off. I went and got another job at the University of Laverne because, um, again, I'm an adjunct uh, professor, and that doesn't pay anything like a full time. They call us freeway flyers. The reason is, is that we're always on the freeway flying from one job to another. And so I got a job at University of Laverne in, during COVID in 2019, towards the end, and have been working there online. And I try and work hard in everything I do. I don't stop at just what they give me. I, I take what they give me and see what more can I do? Uh, how can I put Mary's flair on it? You know, because I have a lot of that personality. And so I try and see, like, what can I do to make it better for students? What can I do to help pave the way to make it easier for students like LaToya, like you? And I create my courses so that you learn what you need to learn without giving a bunch of homework. How many of you just get homework and you're not even sure why the professors really don't even explain sometimes why they just give it and you're like, what is the purpose? Well, I try and make sure everything I do is very meaningful. And so I want to say when I say hard work pays off is on Monday uh, was uh, Valentine's Day and it was about seven o'clock and I got a phone call from my department chair from University of Laverne. And he said that, uh, you know, he wanted to call and offer me a full-time teaching position. And I said, wait, what? And he said, the uh, few people here in the higher ups uh, see the hard work that you're putting in and would like to offer you a full-time uh, teaching position here at University of Laverne. Now, mind you, it's not Valley, right? Because I bleed blue, but... It's a full-time teaching position. And, and to let me say, um, I hadn't applied for it. And the second thing is I have been praying for it, right? I've been praying for a year for that full-time job, but I didn't apply for it. And normally in university, you can't teach, uh, be full-time unless you have a doctorate, which I don't have that. I just have a master's. So in my heart, I know that, you know, God, who is my father, has gone before me to lay that path. And, and it's his timing, not mine. And so uh, I'm really excited about this um, full-time job. I didn't know I was going to have it to, to share it with you, but that is, that's the ultimate goal is to find a job that you love so it doesn't feel like work. It's a job that you can go to and enjoy yourself. I enjoy myself as Latoya, as my husband. I'm always just loving life and I'm joyful because I'm doing something I love and getting paid. And now I'm gonna have my own office, my own phone number and more money. 
Who's who can complain against that, right? <laughs> so yes, I I couldn't do this all without our students. And for the last two years, the students that I've been helping have shown their love as well. And let me just share this with you. This here is the 2020 Applause Award. This is where students actually get to, and thank you uh, for applauding for that, but this is where students uh, get to send in a form that says, thank you for your help, thank you for your support, and over the last couple of years, I've gotten enough that I also got 2021, Woo! So this is my Grammys. Mm -mm -mm, right here because it promotes students and it shows how much I love all of you and how I'm rooting for each and every one of you, how I want for each of you to go and get your degrees, how I want you to find something you love to do and just let your money work for you. Don't work for your money. So that's about me in a nutshell. Um, I hope, you know, I can hear more about your journey. And if you always need me, just know that I'm available all the time. You can call me day or night, as long as I'm not sleeping. And I'll answer my phone if I'm not asleep uh, to help anybody that calls to say, I need help. Because I feel like there's not enough of us. My husband is the same as I am. Uh, and he's actually my mentor. He, he, he's been a football coach forever let me just say that and that shows his support when he's on the phone at 11 o'clock at night because you know how many of you've gotten an argument with a parent and sometimes you might have had to have left or they might have even kicked you out right and so he'll be on the phone trying to help them find a place you know to sleep and he's um you know advocate for them eating on campus and getting them food. And, you know, he's also an advocate for students and, and student athletes. And, you know, he's going to be a keynote speaker at, uh, I think it's called Mid Semester Refuel with the Valley Bound program. So if you get a chance to log in and see him there, uh, that'd be great. But I'll tell you, you know, they say, um, you know, when you have somebody in your life that uh, mentors you, you turn around and mentor others. It's kind of like paying it forward. And I really believe that we should always be helping one another. There's enough in the world that tears us down, but we need to build us up. We need to keep building and, and rebuilding and rebuilding. I think that's so important. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions on the chat. Elvis? Sorry, was there a question? Yeah, professor. Did you have a question? No, no, I said no. Oh, you said no. Nope. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Well, I'm going to show my last slide before we leave because I think it's important to see. It's important to graduate. It's important to get your success in education. Let me tell you, without an education, it's hard to open doors. But with an education, you have a choice. You have a choice in what you wanna do with your life. You have a choice on what path you wanna take. I know that they just raised all of the minimum wage to $15 an hour, and that sounds like Woo, that's great money. And it is. Uh, when I was uh, growing up, minimum wage was like $2.75 or something insane. I can't even remember what minimum wage was, to be honest. Uh, that's what else happens as your mind goes. But no, I'm just kidding. That's another, another talk. <laughs> but I'm just saying that it's important to stay in school. I know that it sounds like it would be easier to get a job and have this little bit of money, 
But just like that slide, you'll always be facing your tail. So it's real important that you finish the, the path that you've set for yourself. It's important to finish what you're doing, even when you have the hard times, like Latoya. She might have a lot to you know, get going, but in the long run, she's gonna be doing what she loves. And that's her degrees in psychology and sociology. Latoya? Yeah. Yes. So she's double majoring from Valley. So, so keep yes. go, pushing through. That's my advice. Maria, did you have a question? Yes. Um, sorry, Coach. Um, I zoomed in late. I just got out of work. That's okay. We were we were just talking about uh, you know how um, mentoring one another helps to equal success and stay in school. Okay. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Well, okay. So if you ever need any help or you have some questions and you think I might be able to help you, please don't hesitate and reach out to me. I also want to thank um, our SCTA that is constantly raising money for those that have less school supplies, uh, um, food and clothing and, you know, um, our CTA supports them to help them to be the best they can be. And they've been doing their greatest during COVID where everybody else shut their door. They stayed in connection with each other. And that's what a union is about. That is what support is about, is staying connected and doing what you can to help each other get where you got to go. Clap well, it up. Thank you so much for that shout out. Um, before you do leave us, um, again, I want to thank you for being here today and, um, and all of the, our guests here for tonight. Um, but I, one last piece of advice, you know, what would be your advice for those new upcoming educators specifically, you know, knowing that you have, you know, a background in being in this field and then having gone through what we're going through right now? What's a piece of advice that you can share with the rest of us? My advice is uh, just as I gave Latoya, if you were just starting out and you have the world on your shoulders, take one class so that you can see the fight isn't against you, that you actually can finish with 100% of of joy in your heart because you finish strong that you want like she said then I ended up with seven classes right and she's never stopped she's just going and if you have to work a full-time job because you have a family to support then don't forget we have night school that's the thing about college now is back in the day they didn't even have hardly any night classes but now we do have night classes you have to make a plan you can't just think like, I'm going to go back to school and take a class. You have to decide where you're going. So to save you time and money, if you have the time and money, then sure, take as many classes as you want and, and find out what you like. But a lot of times you already know. So I say, make a plan, decide what path you want to take, and then reach out to a counselor and Listen to what they have to say, but decide if that's the best route for you, because not always is it. You know what is best for you. I think we all have enough smarts that we know what is right. And especially if you start a class and you're, and you're going on to sociology and your counselor puts you in some sort of computer information system class, and you're like, what is this, right? You don't have to stay in it just to please your counselor. They might have made a mistake. Maybe they looked at the wrong transcript, the wrong academic profile. And that happens too. Nobody's perfect. And so don't beat yourself up. Even if you withdrew from a class or you might have got a D or an F. And I did get a D in Italian. That really made me cry. But I didn't let it stop me. I just said, okay, well, maybe I'm, you know, being an international speaker is not going to be for me. I'm obviously not going to be able to speak Italian. So I say that to say, don't give up one step at a time. 
map out your future. Nowadays, it's already, everything's already been there for you. Like don't reinvent the wheel. Don't make it hard for yourself. Just start making a checklist and start uh, checking them off like a task. Okay, I took these classes or I'm going to work this weekend, or I got this little part-time gig, you know, and that goes for finances, right? If you don't map it out and make a list of what you owe, then how are you going to know how much you have to make to cover that? So then again, you'll be chasing your tail. So I believe that Jesus says that he will trust us with little, but if we, we can show that we are good with little, then he will give us more. So it's up to you. Are you a big spender and you're going to go blow it all at the San Manuel? Or are you saving it so you can keep your lights on? That's a, that's a hard choice for some. I don't know. <laughs> yes, Elvis? <laughs> no, no, nothing. I, was oh, okay. I thought you were saying you were out there gambling. That's what I thought you said. No, I'm working. But... No, I'm just teasing. Just kidding. Well, now it's <laughs> so I, I just want to say, don't give up one step at a time, one class at a time, and, and just know where you're going. Know where you're going. It's important to have that map. Well, thank you so much. Those are kind words that we all benefit from because um, I, I know personally I needed to hear a little bit of that because it's been a struggle. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here, um, and I want to wish everyone a, a good rest of your evening, and once again, thank you. You're welcome. I hope to see everybody soon.